The iconic swinging doors of an Old West saloon are a staple of Western films and games. Something for the hero to push open, causing the saloon to go silent as he searches for the man who killed his love. But how accurate are they? Did Old West saloons even have them in the first place? Well, let's find out in the history behind Batwing Doors. To talk about the iconic Batwing Doors, we must first discuss the saloon itself. Western saloons appeared in the 19th century, serving wary travelers, fur trappers, soldiers, and anyone else who just wanted to wet their whistle, or in the case of later establishments, enjoy some nice, legally gray company. Saloons took a variety of shapes and sizes, from solid houses with the green top to multi-story saloon hotel combos. The style even changed depending on the ethnicity of the area, with Irish saloons being the typical western saloon with a long bar to serve drinks, while German style saloons were more like restaurants serving food and a focus on family dining. And yes, saloons did have batwing doors, sometimes. Batwing doors served several functions that benefited both the saloon owner and patrons. The small doors offered great ventilation by allowing the musty old smoke-filled air trapped in the saloon to freely flow outside and vice versa. Their dual hinge design allowed cowpokes across town to enter with just a push rather than having to pull and drop whatever they were carrying no matter if they were entering or leaving. And once the Batwing door became synonymous with the cantina, it allowed advertising for passerbys who couldn't exactly read. All while shielding the muck, booze, and spit from the religious proper, who didn't exactly want to look into a saloon while walking to church. But Batwing doors did have a lot of issues. A big one is the fact that if you have what is essentially a door-sized hole in your establishment, you're going to be exposed to the elements. So if the environment was too cold, too windy, too wet, too humid, or anything that wasn't optimal for humans, it would be much better to just have real doors and keep mother nature out of our drinks. Another one is that you can't lock them. Even if you were to padlock a batwing door, anyone wanting to get some free whiskey could just crawl under them. To fix this problem, many saloons had real, lockable doors that closed in front of the batwings. When the saloon was open, the doors would be stacked against the wall, allowing the batwings to swing freely. But when closing time came or a storm was coming in, the saloon owner would close the doors and keep his business safe. So that's the history behind batwing doors. But before we end, I'd like to share some interesting facts I found while researching. Red Dead Redemption 2 has most of its saloons use real doors, which is good because of the before mentioned weather issues. Only saloons in specific regions could have batwings, the rest used normal doors. RDR2 isn't perfect however, as the only saloon with batwing doors that makes sense is Smithfield Saloon in Valentine. The livestock town has decent weather and climate, although wind from the mountains may make the wind chill a little cold. The ones in New Austin are more excusable because RDR1 was a more spaghetti western rather than a western simulator. But the constant dust storms would fill everyone's glasses with those bat wings. And even the one in Valentine doesn't have lockable doors to protect from thieves and weather. Another one is in movie and game depictions of bat wings, they're usually smaller than their real life counterparts. This is to make the protagonist seem bigger and more powerful. In real life, a typical bat wing would extend from knee to the chest area. And finally, one that I found pretty interesting was that saloons used to have a marketing tactic where lunch was free with the purchase of a drink. Sounds kind of familiar. So that's all. What do you think about Batwing Doors? Are you okay with the inaccuracies or can you never not see them how I showed them to you? Comment below and let me know. And if you have another person or place who you'd like to see the history explained, tell me below and I may make a video about it and give you a shout out. Anyway, that's all, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.